Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me as always is my co-host and good buddy, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? Man, today is going well. Um, you know, bef- I, I do want to I want to I want to do a, a big shout out to anybody that's uh, that's purchased the WAM. Um, it's just it's a huge thing for both Kyle and I. I know that uh, like something that we created is is really starting to help the uh, the community, and that's exactly what uh, what we set out the uh, the admin bar to do in the first place. So it's uh, just a big big thank you. Yes, we've even had folks uh, translating all the content into their native language and then giving it back to us so we can share it with other people in the community. So there's people now uh, using a Dutch version, a Spanish version, a French version, and it's all just because the community decided to do it for themselves and then share it with everybody, which I think is totally awesome. Y'all rock. Uh, You've made our day, our week, and our month. So thank you very, very much. Uh, today, we are going to be joined by Jason Resnick, as you can see here, from res.com with three Z's, R-E-Z-Z-Z.com. Uh, he was actually referred to us to come on the show by Laura Elizabeth, and if Laura says it, then uh, we do it because she's an admin bar Hall of Famer. Um, so we jumped on a call with Jason the other day, and we're kind of workshopping some ideas, and we started talking about word of mouth marketing and how we've kind of left that up to our customers to do. So we're going to be talking today about some proactive ways we can encourage word of mouth marketing. Marketing. So, hello and good morning, Jason. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I'm yeah. excited to be here, guys. Absolutely. Yeah, we're we're excited to have you too. So, uh, so I don't screw everything up. Why don't you introduce yourself to every introduce yourself to everybody and uh, let us know how you ended up on the admin bar today? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thanks to Laura. Uh, she's a, a Hall of Famer on Living the Feast, which is my pack podcast as well. So. Uh, Thank you very much, Laura, for connecting us. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a web developer. I've been a web developer by both heart and trade uh, for well, close to almost two decades at this point, um, which actually, now that I think about it, it has been two decades. Um, but yeah, I mean, I help my clients who are established online businesses get more customers. That is, in a nutshell, what I do. Um, but <clears throat> as of maybe the past five years or so, I've really helped them with a lot of the behavioral stuff. So on-site personalization, email marketing, those sort of things to really nurture leads to customers and then customers to repeat customers for clients. Um, And and just help my clients learn more about who they're engaged with. Um, And maybe in the past two years, I've also helped uh, developers and designers also build recurring revenue and specialize their business. Uh, basically how I built my business because they were asking me at WordCamps and other meetups and events how I did it. And so after a while getting the same sort of questions, I was like, hey, maybe I can help this in a greater context uh, by just pushing out all sorts of content of what I'm learning, what I'm doing, what I'm failing on, and uh, hopefully help other people realize their dreams of why they started a business in the first place. Yeah, it's amazing. This Just this community, there's so many people with a similar story to that that just say, hey, you know, I found success and there's been so many people along the way that have helped me get here. Like, let me give back what I've learned to other people. And, you know, I think people get sick of the, like the guru syndrome and there's like these people out here preaching, this is the way you do it. But I think what you really find is there's a ton of people like yourself uh, and, and many others that are in our group and stuff that just say, this is the way I've done it. And here's how I found success and let me help you with what I know. And it's kind of a a choose your own adventure, like find the ways that make sense to your business and the things you connect with. And there's a lot of different ways you can get to, you know, success in a business. It doesn't have to necessarily be one way or another. So that's awesome. You're giving back to the community and helping people out. Uh, I'm sure everyone appreciates that. It wasn't just uh, wasn't just Laura that recommends you. In fact, I started talking to my buddy Matt Davies soon after I talked to her, and and he's like, "Oh yeah, you got to get Jason on." And then uh, I teased everybody in the group the other day that we were having you on and kind of what we were talking about. And I have to tell you, people in our Facebook group are shaming you for not being in there. I, I tagged you in the post, <laughs> and, and it had the little circle with the line through it next to it, so yeah. you're getting shamed in the group. So I told well, him I, I would get you in there. So yeah, this is how I'm publicly calling. You you out on that all right so i'll have to do that i'll actually have to have a facebook account i guess right no i mean to, 
first of all, thank you for doing that. Um, yeah, I am terrible at Facebook because that's just a rabbit hole for me. Yeah. Like, there's like, I don't know. I, I get there's groups there and, and you guys are doing great over there too. But like, just for me, I, like Twitter is it because it's like one and done. And I'm like right. out, you know, like I could spend five minutes for whatever reason. And it could be because relatives and the algorithm that Facebook puts you into, even mm -hmm. though I'm a developer and I understand what it's trying to do. I find right. myself like a half hour later, like looking at random police car chases and like <laughs> marketplace like legos for my kids and like, right. like what was i doing here in the first place <laughs> so. i think i've gotten facebook pretty much down i can stay focused on wasting time on what i'm trying to waste on time i i get off track on youtube like youtube just mm. kills me i cannot go watch something on youtube without watching 20 other things mm. uh, I, I know the struggle is real for sure <laughs> all right so let's uh so let's dive into this today so to kind of set this up i think we all realize that uh getting referrals from customers is one of the most powerful ways you can you know get new clients into your business because really what you're doing is you're getting to skip the whole phase of uh proving your worth to somebody or building trust with these people because somebody you know is already instilling that trust in, in their friend by saying, hey, you've got to check this person out. They do a really good job. So when you get these kind of leads that come in, it's it's almost a whole different ballgame because you get to skip a lot of this relationship building thing that you might have to really dig into. I'm not saying you don't build a relationship, but you get to skip a lot of it and fast forward to it, um, which is awesome. So referrals are great. I love getting referrals. I know those are going to be hot leads when they come in. Uh, and you know, the more my customers know me, the better referrals they give me. Unfortunately, we're leaving it up to our customers to send us referrals. So for, for the most part, you know, we, you know, we would love it for our customers to give us referrals, but we don't give them a whole lot of easy ways to do it or encourage it. So every, th every time it happens, it's almost a passive thing that just happened to us. So if we could look at some ways to actually encourage those things and maybe take a little bit more control over it, uh, you know, one more referral a month, that could mean thousands of dollars to your business uh, right away. So that's what we're going to dig into today. So just speaking to the point of referrals and word of mouth marketing, what do you think it is about it that makes it so uh, effective, Jason? Well, first off, uh, I agree with most of what you said. I okay. still, I don't shortcut any of the processes I put in place. Um, <clears throat> meaning I get the idea that you don't have to nurture them as much or build that trust level because that trust, and that's why it's so effective is that it's intrinsic on the person that referred you and basically introduced you with that other person. Um, but the thing is for me, and I still do this from time to time, it's like I have a, a an application, a project, I call it a project brief that they have to fill out. Every lead has to fill that out. Mm -hmm. And there are times where I'll shortcut it and be like, eh, I know enough about this person. They don't need to fill this out. And inevitably, there's always something missed, right? There's right. just some piece of data or whatever that's, that I collect on that project brief. So I always encourage people, while that is a very hot lead, just get them through that pipeline or put them through that pipeline, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, to answer your question, it is. It's that intrinsic trust. I mean, the, <clears throat> it's crazy that when I reflected on my own business, uh, you know, and I've been running my own business since 2010 at this point, that the number one lead, which most of your listeners here and, and it, basically anybody who's doing development design or services work, they're going to say word of mouth is their biggest lead generation tactic. And then <clears throat> I always follow that up with, well, what are you doing? What's your word of mouth marketing, right? What, what are you doing? And then uh, the shoulders go up, they sort of shrug and they say, I don't know, it just happens. Right? Waiting for somebody so, to say something nice about me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Waiting key, key word there. Right. And so, so for me, I, I, I always say, Hey, can, could we create moments in time with a project or with a past client or give them opportunities to then go ahead and spark inspiration to create that referral, uh, create a testimonial, those sort of things. Uh, Laura was great. She gave me some ideas too that I hadn't thought of before in a conversation that I had with her. But for me, it's, it's 
when I look at my business, I've not spent one ad dollar on my services business at all. And so when I look at that, I, I basically built in systems to offer up opportunities for clients and past clients to then say, Hey, you might want to talk to Jason when they encounter in their circle of friends or colleagues, an opportunity, when they hear an opportunity that I can help them with. Right. And so they've already built that trust factor because they're either friends or colleagues or they, there's some relationship there. Well, they're going to say, Hey, if they did so great for John, then maybe he can do the same thing for me or better. Right. And so that's, that's why it's so effective. Now, the crazy stat is, is that I was looking up online about three weeks ago that over 70% of people don't believe ads, right? When they see it, whether it's commercial and online ad or whatever, but yet over 92% of people will believe a brand is good if their friend recommends it, mm -hmm. right? So for me, I'm like, okay, well, if over three quarters are not believing an ad, why would I dump money into that, right? Especially when you're starting out, you're not, there's, you don't have a lot of money to invest in ads, but you have a lot of time. You have a lot of resource for your own efforts, really, to then put together systems that allow you to, hey, let's get a part, let's be a part of that 92%. How can I make myself available to clients and past clients that then create those referable moments that, well, I don't even have to actually go out and get, they're getting it for me. Yeah, and I don't know if you've ever been part of any BNI groups. Is that something you're familiar with? BNI networking? I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with it. Um, it just I'm, wasn't my cup of tea, to be yeah, honest. It's, it's not my cup of tea at all. I often <laughs> refer to it as a cult. Although I will say <laughs> they do a really good job uh, of this type of referral marketing because the whole point of going to these meetings is you network with this group of people, your little clan, your cult, uh, and, and really your job isn't to pitch your own business. Your job is to learn about everybody else's in your group's business and then go out and help them find opportunities. So you're actually, your mission is to bring back these little slips with leads for other people in your group. Mm -hmm. And really that's, that's exactly what it's doing is it's building this. It's a really structured way of building, you know, this referral network of people that are actually out there actively looking for opportunities for you. Uh, and when they can recommend you to a friend, like you said, your ROI is so much better on a referral than it's going to be in an ad. Yeah. But so, the problem that I have there is that they actually have to learn about your business, right? right. So like you're getting like a salesperson, if you will, right? I mean, you know, in effect. Sure. The thing with clients and why I believe so heavily in this is that clients, while I mean, my, most of my clients really don't know what happens behind the scenes. They don't understand all of the the, the buttons I push and levers that I pull but yet they know what happens after that, right? They see the results and they know the problem that they had when they came to me in the first place. So they understand the transformation that happens there. So they can convey that in a way to their friend that makes sense in their language and, and they understand that, right? And so for me, I don't have to educate. I don't have to essentially tell somebody how I run my business, what I can do and who I can help they already know that. It's just, I have to say, hey, if you know anybody that needs help in their ConvertKit account or their WooCommerce website, I wouldn't mind an introduction. And that's I, all I need help needed. with both of those things, actually. So we'll have to talk <laughs> soon after this Absolutely. show. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, essentially that's, that's, that's all it is, right? Like you, a case in point, you know you need help with those things. So if I can create oh, just a nudge and all it is is a simple email, right? Like we all converse with our clients via email. Well, every sixth or seventh email, throw a PS at the bottom. Every, you know, release of code or, hey, I, we built out this new landing page design or whatever it is, that milestone that you hit with a project, just put it in the PS, say, hey, this was awesome. I really enjoyed working with you on this. Uh, if you know anybody else who kind of needs something like this uh, and insert 
you know, swap out this with the actual specific thing. Right. Um, I wouldn't mind an introduction. And that's all it takes a lot of times that you, it's because they're not going to be thinking about you. They're just thinking about themselves. Like mm -hmm. we think about ourselves and our business, but we kind of, you know, if there's that nudge there, it creates that, hey, oh yeah, you know what? I heard over last week, somebody asked me about this stuff. Let me, let me connect these two. And yeah, that, that the PS tip is, is really powerful. And I do want to get into some of these tips here. In fact, the, uh, when we first started conversing via email, there was a PS in the email you sent me and yep, I clicked it and went through it. And, uh, it was probably just something that stuck into your signature, uh, but it definitely had me click it. So I think that's a pretty valuable tool. Uh, so let's, let's look at a little bit. What do you think, what do you think are the most common things people are already doing for, to encourage word of mouth marketing or referrals uh, that maybe they're, they might be accidentally doing it, but they're not proactively doing it. Like what are some things we could look at uh, just improving in our system? Um, you know, similar to the, the PS tip in the email. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think some people are actually asking. They're just asking with this, I need to craft the perfect email to ask for the referral sort of thing. Um, you know, a lot of people do that after the project or maybe at the launch of a project. Um, you know, we hear a lot of times about referrals and testimonials almost in the same breath. Um, but I think that they're two different things and you can ask for them all at two different times too. Um, so while people are asking and having that perfect email, if you will, and say, Hey, I, you know, I need a referral. You can, you know, send them to this landing page. Here's a little bit of a one page thing that I do and you can send it off to your friends. It doesn't have to be that perfect. You just need to spark the conversation. Right? And that's why that PS is effective because it's just a one sentence that kind of like, Hey, it's a nudge. It's a, it's a, how do you do? Hey, in case you've heard, you know, I do this other stuff. Right. And so, uh, I think it's good to send out that email, right. That purposeful email to get that referral, but mix it in elsewhere. Like you don't have to ask on every email, right? Like I said, probably before, don't like, ask on every that, that right. bit much, <laughs> right. But if you ask on every fifth or seventh or eighth email, uh, you know, that's okay. And you can mix it up too. Like, you know, offer, Hey, I saw this article online, right that I think is useful for your business. So it doesn't always have to be an ask. It's just a, some sort of value add that almost they start to look at the PS, if you will, right? Like you're training them to almost look at the PS. Um, <clears throat> another thing is, is if you are, and I encourage anybody listening, if you do follow up to your past clients, most people do that when they need the work. They, like they come out of projects and they're like, Hey, I don't have anything lined up. Let me go essentially shake the tree and see what falls out. I would encourage you to at least shake the tree while you're doing a lot of work. Um, stay front of mind because if, if it, if it goes like six, nine months and your past client doesn't hear from you, they may have like forgotten, right? Like a lot of clients of mine, they come back to me. I have, I'm in conversation with one that left me last January, January of 2018. Um, and yeah, he's like, look, I, yeah, I'm back because when I left, <laughs> I told you that if it was a bad idea to leave, I'd be back and I'll admit it. Right. And so the only reason why he came back was because every month or so I email past clients and it's just helpful articles because I find them online. Um, you can throw in those word of mouth referrals at that point. It's not even just a, a blatant ask either, right? Like if I throw in an article on running, because who I help are e-commerce sites, a lot of them, right? So if I find an article that's useful for, hey, end of year holiday emails that you should be sending, well, it's useful for me. So it's going to be useful for any of my clients. And I'll throw that couple of bullet points and the link into an email and send it off and I'm done, right? It's five minutes. And so that's enough of a nudge to then say to the person who's receiving it, oh yeah, you know what? My, I was at a meeting last night and they were talking about doing some email marketing. Let me introduce Jason to him. And so that happens 
naturally too. And all of these things are systems and they're built over time too. Like I, I would just encourage you to at least engage with your existing clients at this point in time and then build these on top. Like I, I know from my business over the past essentially nine plus years at this point that I get about six or seven referred leads into my business based off of some of these things. And so every single month, like rather, I should have added that in there, <laughs> six or seven per month that I get in, right? Now I can't take on six or seven clients every every month. Most of my clients are recurring anyway. So there's usually like a spot or two available or I do a one-off project or something like that, but it's predictable into my business. And that's the objective here. Yeah. Then you're not having to go out and shake the tree vigorously because you've just kind of been nudging that tree all along. <clears throat> exactly. And, and you know, I, th I thought about something too, as you're kind of talking about, uh, you know, sharing something with your client because you know, it will help them. You know, you actually end up knowing a lot about your client's business. And, and that's one thing I love about this job is because I'm interested in business. So I love jumping into these clients' business. I end up doing like business consulting by accident because I just see things from a different perspective and I want to help them out, you know. But you end up learning a ton about your client's business along the way. And you can actually encourage referrals by giving referrals. Uh, you know, I have a customer mm -hmm. here locally that uh, we're, we're hot and cold sometimes. He's a little bit of a difficult character. Uh, but I, I noticed a problem. It's a problem that he solved. It was a problem happening with my neighbor and I gave that referral to my neighbor. And then I let my customer know, Hey, I referred my neighbor over to you cause she has this problem. Uh, I just wanted to let you know if she contacts you, you know, take good care of her. It's my neighbor. And, uh, and, and I just did it because I saw the problem and I knew he could fix the problem. Um, and, and not a week later, he said, hey, wanted to let you know, you know, I ran into a guy that's starting a business and I told him about how great you've done on my website. I'm like, I didn't even have to ask for nothing. It was just he was reciprocating what I did for him. So mm -hmm. if you can look for opportunities like that for your customers, you know what your customers do and you know their business pretty well. If, if you can find ways to refer them, it's a two way street. People will just naturally want to do that back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think <clears throat> as you were talking there too, I thought about, you know, the people that know your business, right, are your network of, of colleagues, if you will, right? Not necessarily friends too, but, you know, I talk to other WooCommerce developers. I talk to other ConvertKit and Drip specialists and things of that nature. We all do similar work. And while maybe we're competitors, I don't ever look at it that way. I kind of look at it like we're just colleagues, part of the same team. We want the best for our clients. Well, I want to be able to refer them work, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm overloaded and I can't take it on, if I can connect a lead to them, then there's a good likelihood that they'll go to reciprocate that later on. And that's also a word of mouth thing because then if you know that, that they do that, uh, you could just reach out to them once a quarter say, hey, I've got some bandwidth. Um, I've been working on this over the past quarter. If you don't potentially talk to them or engage with them outside of this. Um, but hey, I'm looking for clients that are this. If you know of any or or that you have overflow work, I'd love to be able to help in, sort, in, in any sort of way. So creating that warm outreach because again, you don't have to educate them. They understand what you do because they do it too. Mm -hmm. And so you have that, you know, they know that they're going to send you a good lead or not because you can, and you can be straight up honest, like, Hey, look, I'm looking for customers that have this budget, have these specs, right. And bullet list this out and, and say, make it super easy for them. Right. And say, all right, well, they don't have enough budget. I'm not going to refer them, but they do have the budget. They tick all these boxes. I can't take them on. Well, here we go. And so you create that sort of word of mouth uh, just through your network and your colleague outside of your existing clients. Yeah. And I mean, some, um, some clients too, like they fit really well, like similarly to that with, uh, with your own business. Um, I've had a lot of luck with, uh, with print shops that don't offer website design mm -hmm. or development or any of that stuff, but they do, you know, phenomenal work. And I work closely, you know, when I do, uh, when any like print marketing development, I'll, you know, recommend them, uh, as, as far as my clients get, uh, get printing. 
and because they're unable to uh, to offer the service I do, it's a it's a really good uh, partnership. Um, I've got and you two share the same shops. customers. What's that? You share the same customers, but offer different services. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's uh, it works out really well. Yeah, so I mean, supply chain is is huge. I mean, I it was funny. I was on Jonathan Stark's podcast, and he called me a platform specialist. And I hadn't really thought of that term before, but essentially that's what I am because. I built my business on WooCommerce and the subscriptions plugin. I built another avenue of revenue through Drip and another avenue through ConvertKit. Mm -hmm. And those are products that those companies in and of themselves have customers that need custom work. Well, they're not going to build the custom one off job, but just talking because I've specialized in those areas, talking with their support team, talking with their marketing team, on social, helping people, those sort of things. As a side effect of that, their support teams have referred me work. And right? I've gotten plenty of emails saying, hey, so-and-so at ConvertKit has said, you're the guy I need to talk to. Or you know, Brent at Prospress has emailed me and said, hey, I've got a customer that needs this sort of thing. This might be on our roadmap, might not be on our roadmap, but their timeline is a lot quicker, but you might need this right and so you know just to be able to create those connections from the supply chain perspective is so important especially yeah. in the word of mouth yeah so quit being a dick to the technical support guy when you have a problem because <laughs> right. he might just be the person that sends you your next job exactly right i mean 100 percent. i mean that's the other thing too it's like you know just to be able to <clears throat> you want to be able to stand out too right and so like if you're just like, like you said, the dick that's, Hey, why isn't this working? I don't know. I tried everything. You keep sending me links and, and this still doesn't work or whatever. You know, just remember that they're humans too on the other end and just, you're going to stand out. Right. And you know, if, if they do refer you work, you know, reach back and say, thanks, you know, maybe buy them a coffee, right? Like, just simple gesture to reach back and say thanks and yeah. uh that's that one of the big things way. i mean that's one of the big things that <clears throat> i even ask my leads as they come in if they just send me an email and say hey so, you know so somebody referred you to me um, and then the laundry list of their project i always write back as the first sentence do you mind letting me know who did so i can reach back and say thanks because that for me that's i mean that's humanity right like, yeah. just mm -hmm. say thank you when when it's when it's warranted and and that kind of leads me i had i had one more question here that i had written out uh and you kind of led me into that with with saying thank you or buying them a coffee what what about the concept of offering incentives for for referrals how do you fall on that yeah i mean <clears throat> i i see the the advantage there i've never personally done that right um I guess the thing that comes to mind is, is two things. One, I've spoken to a lot of people that, especially when they're starting out, what they do is they discount for referrals, right? So I was having a conversation with a designer and she was saying that uh, what she does is instead of spec work, right? Because she was just ramping up. She was just over a year into her business. What she did was she said, hey, in her contract, this is the value of this project. And she put a dollar value there. I'm going to do it for this. But if you give me X referrals after the project is launched and I close those, I'll give you some money back. So I thought that was an interesting way to start ramping up that business, right? Um, <clears throat> the other side of it is, is, so I had a client a number of years back, right? Um, and you know, it, they were lived out in the Midwest and there was no major league baseball team there. And just in our weekly, you know, meetings and calls, you know, he, him and his son would always go to the minor league game and, you know, he would tell me, Hey, we went to the game. It was a great game last night and so on and so forth. Now I'm a diehard Met fan, right. And, you know, living in New York, we've got the Mets and the Yankees. Like I couldn't even imagine not having a major league team around. Right. Like, so, um, <clears throat> I love baseball, live and breathe it during the winter time, usually around February. I even watched the Australian world series. Right. So like <laughs> I'm a diehard Met fan, right? Like, and, and I love baseball. And so 
when we launched his website, I bought them two tickets for him and his son and to go, you know, just enjoy a night at the ballpark. And he, I haven't done work for him in three and a half years. And yet he still refers me work. Um, and he says, it wasn't so much that you gave me the tickets to the game, but it was the note that you included with that. And you said, here's two tickets to celebrate you and your son a night at the ballpark. And he said, just because you thought like that and you thought about my son and how awesome that would be for him, for me, it's easy enough to refer. And right. And so he consistently gives me leads and referrals. And so I don't know that that was an incentive per se, but mm -hmm. like it was just me reaching out and saying thanks with that gesture because we launched his new website. <clears throat> I guess maybe it's an incentive, right? Like, yeah. So I went on, I went on kind of a rant the other day talking about, uh, people incentivizing reviews for things. So I got an email the other day and it was, you know, some software and you use this software, we'll give you a $10 Amazon card to leave us a review. And I thought, you know, this is, this to me is bullshit because now I know any review on this site can't be trusted because there's no possible way you're not going to be influenced somewhat by the fact that you're getting something from it. So even though I'm kind of iffy on this software, I probably am not going to take their $10 and then, tell them how shitty it is, right? I would just not take the money and not leave a review or I'm going to leave something kind of positive because I'm getting the money. So I know my my words back are going to be influenced by that money and it really kind of taints the whole thing to me, right? Uh, and so I kind of see incentivizing referrals in a similar light, maybe not quite the same, but when you do it really overtly, like if your PS was in big, bold letters and said, I'll send you a hundred dollars if you send a referral my way, um, you know, people are probably going to be more apt to do it because they want to collect the cash, but it's going to be less authentic. Right. And um, the quality and, of those leads are probably going to be way lower as well. Right. And, and exactly. what you described in, uh, in the first example you gave, um, you know, kind of incentivizing that from here's the proposal and here's a way you could end up spending less, you know, in the long run, or even, you know, just being kind and saying thank you, which goes a long way. Um, you know, you are giving an incentive for those referrals in a way, but you're not overtly like trying to cloud people's judgment with it. And I think there's a distinction there. I'm probably not able to articulate it really well, uh, but I think there's a distinction in that for sure. Well, you see that in like a lot of times with like NPS scores, right? Like, you know, from SaaS companies, sometimes mm -hmm. I'll get these emails to say, Hey, look, if you, you know, give us a little bit of feedback, we'll give you that $25 Amazon gift card. Um, to your point, I, I, I totally get it. I mean, on my podcast, I'm actually trying to grow the podcast in the, the algorithm, right? And so with, with several guests that I really believe in what they do, I've said at the end of the podcast, hey, if you want to you know, further support this person, um, you know, I would love to be able to buy the thing for you, right? If you leave a review, um, people have taken me up on it, right? but the reviews in and of themselves are awesome. They're not just like, hey, this is a great podcast, right? Like right. It's, they talk about the episode and things of that nature. And that's unprompted, right? But the thing is, I I agree with you. I feel like it's almost like, eh, you're buying it. But, you know, to, to, to your point, Matt, like the quality coming in is going to be less. And then you're just putting more work on yourself to mm -hmm. vet these leads coming in because the person is actually just looking to get the discount or the, the gift card or whatever the thing is that you're offering. So that's why for me, an incentive, I, I see the value there, but at the same time, I'm just a solo business operator, right? So I can, I don't need a thousand people coming into my business. I just need my eight and I'm good, right? Like right. every single month, if I'm, I'm doing that, I'm fine. So yeah, that's why I haven't never really incentivized anything, uh, you know, from that perspective. Yeah, I think there's just a, a more subtle way. And you kind of talked about the nudge earlier. I think that's mm -hmm. that's a much more subtle way. And it, it comes off as more authentic in the end. So we, we kind of cover, we covered several tips here people can take away right away. So we talked about, uh, you know, not getting out there and vigorously shaking the tree when you're dry, but, you know, continuing to shake the tree, uh, you know, 
with with past clients on an ongoing basis. And I imagine a lot of that can be just done through uh, having people on an email list and email marketing automations and things like that. Um, we talked about your tip of the PS in the email, which is genius. And I know I'm going to start uh, using right away. Um, we talked about giving referrals to get referrals, which I think is pretty powerful uh, and an easy thing for you to do when you already know your customer's business. Uh, we talked about the supply chain. You know, some of the people, the companies uh, use their software. They actually refer you to their customers because you're not a dick to them. Uh, and we talked about uh, being being kind and being just a human and thanking people. You know, your example of sending tickets to tickets to a ball game to a customer just because you were saying thank you. And, and that wasn't a way necessarily to incentivize it, but it was a way to just be human and thank somebody and, and think of, have empathy for their situation and do something nice for them. That probably didn't cost you a whole lot of money. And, and it's obviously been huge in return. Mm -hmm. um, so just thanking people and being kind. So you think there's anything else we can add to this conversation people could take away and, and put into practice? Yeah. I mean, I think the only other thing that we talked about that, you, that you missed there was <clears throat> your colleagues. If you know other yeah. developers and designers, other marketers that do the same thing that you do, build relationships with them, right? Like, you know, um, and ping them every now and then, right? Like you don't even, look, you don't even, you can be booked solid and reach out to them if you have a relationship with them to say, hey, look, you know, don't do it every month, but like you do it once a year to say, hey, look, I'm, I have some bandwidth and I'm looking for some clients. Um, do that once a year, even, right? You, you can do that in a tweet, a DM, a text, you know. In, in our Facebook form. group, you know, a lot of people are Facebook networking group. networking in there and, and people, you know, I've referred tons of people in our Facebook group. I referred somebody yesterday uh, because I know that's kind of what they specialize in. Somebody came to me and asked if I could do it. And I said, no, that's not me, but I got, you know, I got a person I can definitely recommend. And I think you can get those recommendations from me and Matt and everybody else in the group when you're, when you're that kind human being that comes in the group and gives back and, and tries to help people and, and educates people on the things you know about, um, you know, those referrals will start to come naturally by just giving first without asking constantly. Yeah. I mean, there's to your point there. I mean, I, I love that. Right. Like we, I talked about like the Facebook, you know, the lack of Facebook in my life. Right. But because when I was a part of some business groups in there, a lot of freelancer groups and developer groups, it was like, as soon as you saw a certain name come in or the post, you knew all they were doing is asking, mm -hmm. asking for help, asking for referrals, asking for something else. And I'm like, oh, I'm like I just don't want to waste my time with this. Right. But there are other genuine Matt Davies is a, <clears throat> he's a classic example, just gives, gives, gives. Right. So, yeah. you know, he's easily somebody that comes front of mind all the time because, Hey, I don't mind helping him out. Right. And same with Laura too. Right. Like I know she's a designer, right. But she, she can speak the developer speak. Right. So when people ask me about design question, I'm like, I don't know, I'm not a designer. I know it looks good, but I don't know how to get there. Uh, but here, here's Laura and go talk to her. Right. So just being able to give back to the community that you're a part of rather than just always ask, 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 because nobody likes that person. Yeah. Like, you, you brought up a perfect example with Matt Davies. I, I pulled up this post here every month. Uh, I'll post to the top 10 contributors <laughs> to the group are that month. Uh, and it will show how many new threads they started and how many comments they left. Mm -hmm. And Matt always ends <clears throat> up on this list. He was number four last month and he's kept his streak of zero posts in the group alive. Uh, but he had 89 comments in the last mm. month. And what that kind of tells you is he's not in there asking for a lot of stuff. He's in there giving back to a lot of people. And Matt has things he could be asking for. Absolutely. We've, we have uh, we have pimped out funnel packs and, and at nauseum because I think it's something that it's awesome that he's created. Uh, and he could be in these groups like some people that I could, you know, when you started describing the person that always comes in and asks, I could name a few of those. Uh, I won't. Um, but, you know, he's he's literally never done that in the group. Uh, and, and that's a perfect example of somebody I'm always happy to refer people to uh, because he's in there just giving back and not not constantly asking for it. So that's a great attitude and a perfect example. So cheers, Matt Davies. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, but to to echo that too it's like you know <clears throat> there was i guess this was about a year and a half ago when drip was having growth problems and their support team was essentially crushed 
And so people were complaining a lot on Twitter. <clears throat> so what I did was I just jumped into the conversations and I said, here, here's a resource link or here, this is what I've done and just do like a 30 second quick video of it or whatever. And just to try to help because I love the platform. I love what it could do for my business and my clients. And people were asking questions that I could easily answer. Right. And so people were then just coming straight to me. <laughs> they were like, Hey, how do you do this stuff? And drip also recognized that I was jumping in first with those conversations too. So, uh, you know, it goes a long way when you just contribute back to the community that has given to you. And I don't know, it just makes it so much easier, right? It makes it, <clears throat> makes it more human, if you will. Right. And businesses are about, you know, the human to human contact the business, the people, to people, if you will, and not necessarily a logo. So, right. Mm -hmm. And, and doesn't all this kind of come back to just the spirit of WordPress in general? I mean, this is a collaborative experience. We're all kind of part of this, this project that we're all kind of part of. And it all this platform that we use every day to, uh, you know, pay for this house I live in and everything else is something that exists because a lot of people have given their time and efforts to it. Uh, and, and we all can be a part of that in different ways. So I think that's a, it's a pretty good way for a group hug and like wrap this thing up. I think that uh, I'm going to take a bow on that one, right? Yeah, that was well said. <laughs> <laughs> every once in a while I get one, you know, you just got to listen to me ramble for a while and every once in a while I'll have a point. Well, Jason, I certainly appreciate you joining us today. I think there's about a million tips we can all take away from this. And I know I'm going to start implementing some of these right away. Matt, is there anything that I missed, uh, uh, that you wanted to get to before I wrap us up and get us out of here. Man, I am not going to try to go after that. <laughs> I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, I think you summed it up well. Just, you know, be selfless and like really, really try to connect with people. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, Jason, people can go check you out. We'll leave it in the show notes at res.com, R-E-Z-Z-Z.com. Uh, obviously, if you've made it to this part in the podcast, you are sold on Jason. And I'm sure you're going to go uh, check out his website and start following him around like I am. So, uh, hello, I'm your newest stalker, Jason. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for uh, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. This was fun. Awesome. As a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to share the content, subscribe to the podcast or YouTube channel, use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time and it greatly helps the support the show. Actually, you can also just not be a dick, which we covered. So good job, guys. <laughs> all right. That's all for now. We'll catch you all inside the group. Bye bye. better we've right. never done this before jason yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> what to is the a Mickey, computer i'm learning as i go <laughs>